right, that's what's up, man. It's your boy Rob Dorsey here for the Beats and Brews podcast, and I'm here with my main man. Nerd up, J.O. Yeah, you got to hold that, cuz. So Nerd up, J.O. <laughs> Word up. So we got a special episode here today. We are at uh, Argilis Brewing Company in Newark, Delaware, and uh, we got the two dudes who make everything happen in here, well, especially for the beer and for how things operate, you know what I'm saying? So to my right here, I got my man Proctor, and to the left, Steve. <laughs> we got Steve. So uh, these dudes, they made something real special happen for me. Yeah. And uh, they took a, a, a idea that I had and made it into a physical, tangible, drinkable manifestation. This is the green tea beer as made by Argilis Brewing Company. So yes, thanks, sir. guys. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all. Definitely, definitely. You know, I would really like to get a little bit of history from y'all if we could. You know what I'm saying? So, Steve, can you tell us about what uh, what what brought Argelis into fruition? You know what I mean? Uh, well, uh, the, uh, we uh, we initially started. My I, I grew up in. Is this good? Yep, right there, All right. <laughs> I grew up I grew up in the pizza business. My dad started that. Okay. Uh, 1978 is when Pietro's Pizza originally opened. Uh, I was six months old when it first opened up. So. Yeah. And so I, I grew up in that, and uh, I was looking, you know, to make my mark on the family business. I started home brewing. Okay, uh, okay. I was home brewing for about 10 years. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to incorporate that into the business. Pizza and beer goes well together. Very so true. Uh, and so we uh, we used to be over here in, in Pike Creek, right down a couple miles down the okay. road. This place was available. We moved in. We put yeah. uh, one and a half barrels, what we originally opened with. That's and crazy, uh, man. we have a big free barrel in the system now yeah. that we've uh, graduated <laughs> to. So it's still small, but yeah. Uh, but yeah. And uh, yeah, we've been here for about five years now. And uh, it'll be next year, will be 40 years for, uh, for the pizza hey, business. So, okay. yeah. That's family owned man. and operated for 40 years. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's why, man. See, that's, that's lineage right there. Yes, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. that's like that's long term. Right. You know. And uh, Proctor, man, if you could, could you tell us how you fit into all this, man, and yeah. how you came about? Sure. Certainly. Certainly. Well, uh, right before we opened up our Gila Brewing Company here, uh, when it was still Pietro's, the pizza business he, Steve was just talking about, uh, I started as a delivery driver there, making sandwiches, salads. Started making a few pizzas, and then I kind of worked myself into the creation of this place and I ended up helping out with the computer system and a lot of the stuff putting the restaurant together before we opened. And then a couple years into it I'm making pizzas and, and our, our brewer we had at the time left and Steve was trying to figure out where he would uh, you know find someone else to, to replace him and help out around here so I just kind of raised my hand up was like well I'll, I'll give it a shot you know I've talked to you a lot about it I don't know much about it yet but you know so that was almost two years ago about a year and a half ago now. And uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot in that time. I'm still learning a lot back there in the brewery, especially with upgrading the system. But, yeah. That's a beautiful thing, man. That's a beautiful thing. Y'all definitely put together some very dope classic beers. And, uh, like, it's always a, a very beautiful atmosphere in here. You know what I mean? So you guys run a great establishment. And I know I love being here all the time. And it's, it's one of my favorite places to come to. You know what I mean? Uh, Word. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a second. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I got a smile in here, you know. It's something about it. Now, um, so if we could, could you guys take us through a little bit of this brewing, brewing this beer? You know what I mean? Because like we have the documentary up, but they didn't get to see everything, you know. Right. And like um, even just the day-to-day -day operations of brewing, you know, and and maintaining the uh, brewing space in the back, you know what I mean? Can you give us a little bit of insight on that? Sure, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I mean, when you approached me about it, um, you were talking about doing the podcast, which I thought would be, you know, is a great thing, and you had this idea about this green tea beer, and I was like, yeah, that would be great. You know, we'll brew it up and, uh, and try it out on the podcast. It would be a, a, a great thing to do. And so we started thinking about how it would work, and, and we do uh, Blonde on Belgian. If, if we have one house beer, it's the Blonde on Belgian. We, since we're so small, it's constantly rotating. It's hard to say we're ever going to have a particular beer on tap, but that's kind of the beer that we do always have on tap. And I thought it would do well to kind of showcase what you were trying to accomplish with this beer. And so we use that as our base uh, for the beer. And then you brought in some green tea that you had, mm -hmm. some organic green tea, right? With uh, lemon and ginseng, I think was in there as well. 
And so, and we, we talked about it. We talked about adding some honey. Honey and green tea is, is good. And so we brewed up a, a small batch, pulled off some from the Blonde on Belgian, brewed up a batch of that, added some tea in there. Uh, I think we added a little Falconer's Flight, some Amarillo hops, some fruity yep. hops in there. But yep, not yep. it's not overly hoppy, but a little fruity uh, hop punch to it. And uh, once fermentation took off, we actually uh, uh, boiled up another, brewed up another pot of green tea, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. boiled that, put a bunch of honey in there, mm-hmm. added that to the fermenting beer to try and get some of that honey character in there. And once fermentation was done there, we dry hopped it with some uh, melon hops. They, you get a little bit of that, uh, more some fruit, melon flavors in there, and it really mm-hmm. balances out well with uh, a lot. Of, I, I think you get a good amount of green tea aroma, flavor, but everything, you know, kind of uh, yep. melds together. You know, a wave yeah, of yeah. honey, a wave of tea, a wave of, uh, <laughs> right. of hops. Right. Right. And, it all, oh, and it's all nice, too, because, together. like, as we were brewing it and as we were, we were at doing the additions during fermentation, we could smell it. And the, the green tea with the lemon just, it was really pungent. It really came out. We were real happy with how that was. But also, we were looking forward to see how it turned out after fermentation and after everything was said and yeah, done. Yeah, that didn't and burn off. Yeah. A lot of it, times, some flavors and aromas will burn off from fermentation. That mm-hmm. CO2 will right. kind of push those out. And right. I was curious how much it would, uh, would hang around. Yeah, but it's still got, I mean, it mellowed it a little bit, especially since it was able to sit in the cool, you know, conditions for a few weeks. It mellowed the flavors a little bit, and, and uh, I mean, it's definitely still there, but it mixes in with the honey, you know, real nice. Yeah, and we used our Blonde on Belgian base for, as far as the uh, the base of the beer. The, the yeast we used, though, was, was different. We didn't use our, we used a Belgian Abbey yeast for our Blonde, which will give off some spice character, and we wanted more to showcase the flavors of the ingredients we were adding, so we used a, a neutral American Ale yeast strain in this beer yeah. to try and showcase some of those flavors and aromas. That's what's up, man. Well, I only got one thing to say, man, and, and that is we should go ahead and get into sipping this thing. Yeah, y'all got me excited. You know what I mean? Sounds good. Y'all got me, y'all got me, y'all got me excited. Man. Yeah. So let's go ahead and take All a right. little sip. Oh, matter of fact, because uh, that, that smell Melody is too, something man. special. <laughs> that, is a, yeah. that is a special aroma right there. It's a really bright, it's a really bright aroma for yeah, beer. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. First thing, because what you think? That's amazing right there, cuz. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it's nice and fresh tasting. Yeah. We and, and right now we're in the middle of a, a little mini heat oh, yeah. heat wave, so yeah, yeah, a yeah. nice uh, green tea beer is I think uh, set up set up well right now. It helps. It help this helps a lot. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. It, it's it real really, warm in here, but it's yeah. gotta help you with all that hair, man. Oh it's yeah, it's, <laughs> it gets rough. I gotta tie it back in the brewery. You can tie yeah. it back in there. And so Steve, you had said, you know, the hip hop aspect of the show. You wanted to incorporate the new albums of sure. De La Soul, sure. Tribe Called Quest. Mm-hmm. Right, sure. Mm-hmm. So, I gotta ask, man, which one do you like better? Out of Tribe or De La Soul? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, probably Tribe Called Quest. I, you know, I mean, they're. Uh, uh, the new album is great. The new De La Soul album is really great too. I mean, I, I talk about like it, it, it seems like it's turned a corner where you, you, it used to be where older artists would make their comeback and it'd be real embarrassing. You're like, oh, they should have just stayed where they were. But the new Tribe album, the new De, De La album, are really great albums. It's not cringy at all. It's very good stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, I, you know, Low End Theory and Midnight Marauders and those. I mean, I listen to those albums back and forth i mean we did uh we did a hip-hop ipa day yes. last year yeah, yeah, yeah. and most of the we always take like an influence to kind of build the beers off of and yeah. tribe was the influence for pretty much everything that we did yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. pretty much everything that we did so West IPA day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right yeah pretty much yeah the logo yeah. you guys put together yeah, 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 yeah right yeah. 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 With all our faces on it yeah right. that was wild man yeah. yeah you know and um so uh, new albums of De La Soul and Tribe Called Quest. De La Soul is the and the anonymous nobody and Tribe Called Quest is uh, what is it? We got it from here. Thanks for your yeah. service. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, very very revolutionary uh, sounding album, you know. And, I mean, as they always been a bit, you know, uh, 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 pushing pushing the culture forward, you know what I mean, and, and uh, all that. And uh, De La Soul still soulful still spitting crazy you know one of the guys actually remind me of uh reminds me of rock for some reason 
What's going on, Coach? Uh, yeah. uh, good, 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 man. Welcome and thanks for coming, man. <laughs> Word. So, like, the, uh, 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 the overall theme that I had thought would be a uh, good defense was unity. You yeah, know? Sure, yeah. Uh, because, like, you, you find the balance with uh, those groups. They found the balance within each other. And, like, you guys found a balance within this beer. Right. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, I thought that it was all, great. Yeah. Word, it all co- coexists very well. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so um, I just thought we could uh, take a few uh, seconds and really uh, uh, dive into what we uh, what we feel is a uh, uh, good, like, good congeniality within uh, – what we do here, you know what I mean, and what we do in the world. I gotta, I, f- I keep forgetting this. I gotta talk in the mic. <laughs> <Not right. laughs> so like, let me go to, let me pass it to Proctor real quick. All right. Now, uh, what is, what are, what are, what are some of the things that you think mesh really well with uh, brewing beer and also, you know, like music choices? Oh man, um, I they they go together really well. I think. Uh, I guess the similarity I can I can point out between the two that something I found with brewing beer is it is very much an art form and it's it's you know it's a real creative yeah. process um, you, you can just kind of feel it yeah. smell it taste it and make decisions off that but at the same time you could also go at the same process with calculations numbers science measurements and very technical and logical you know point and then you know get out what you get out and you can kind of do the same thing with music I mean, you see people taking, uh, putting music together and songs together for like a purpose that have, they're calculating measurements and, you know, doing a real, and then you have people that just kind of mix stuff together. They start making noise and tuning it and you get a cool song at the end, you know, just because by what you hear, what you feel at the time. So, I mean, that's, I think that's something that can really bring the two together. Um, it, you, you get into, like, you play some music while you're brewing some beer and you get some inspiration you know, make a little change to the recipe, make it a little bit better, or, or you know, think of some other recipe you could make later, you know, come up with some stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, I agree with a lot of what Proctor said, the, the artistic aspect of it as a, an art form, a creative platform to kind of, it's more than just, a, you know, beer forever was, or for the longest time, at least in, in America, was this sort of watered down, mass produced oh, yeah. thing, oh, and yeah. now it's, yeah. you know, it's it's boomed over the last 20 years, and it's yeah. become this platform to create and, and have ideas and incorporate music. I mean, a lot of our titles, you know, a lot of things we do will be, we'll, we'll be listening to a song in the yeah, brew house right. and a lyrical <laughs> hit with you, and that becomes the name of the beer, right. or yeah. that inspires us to right. brew right. a different beer, and, and just within beer, too, I mean... Uh, t- talking to the unity aspect, right. you know, I I grew up making pizza, yeah. and there was no seasons pizza wasn't trying to hang out with me. Pat's That's pizza great. wasn't calling me up yeah, on yeah, a weekend yeah. Yeah. trying to make a collaborative pizza. Right. We were open for three days, and and Rob, at, you know, from uh, at the time he was with Twin Lakes, now he's at Blue Earl. Came oh, wow. in, they got us grain, they got us hops, they That's got us crazy. in the first festival we ever did. Yeah. You know everything. I mean, uh, Joe Bob from Belfont's hanging out here right yeah. now. There's, yeah. you know, it's it's uh, it's a very collaborative uh, environment, and, and it's expanded pretty rapidly. It's still pretty small uh, in the grand scheme of things, but it's still expanded rapidly. And every, it's a very uh, communal sort of uh, collaborative uh, yeah, yeah. unity for yeah. sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like, I mean, that, like Steve was saying, I mean, that's something that. You really don't see it in a lot of industries, yeah. you yeah. know, between businesses because you're you're competing, and that's the way you know it's the market set up to compete. Yeah. But you know, it's it's a real it's a real brotherhood in brewing. Yeah, for the most part. Beer yeah. is a labor of love, man. Yeah. You know, so I gotta get your reaction, cause yeah. to the beer, man, you gotta tell me. Oh man. You- <laughs> like I said, man, I definitely taste the uh, fruit in it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Definitely got a perfect finish to it as well. You yes. know what I mean? Nice sipper, you know what I mean? Yeah, like you said, on a day like this as well. Um, and I, 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 I love the whole, uh, you know, the way you put it together as far as the art form and as well as the unity uh, uh, of coming together. Right. And I was just going to say, uh, bring that up as well when you said uh, just like how some lyrics can inspire some names. Because I was thinking, that, like, I, I would listen to music some days and then I hear a certain thing and I'd be like, you know what? <laughs> It sound like a, Sticks a nice, you know what I mean? It yeah. sound like a nice beer, you know what I mean? Like something to put together. Subcon- your subconscious is like, hey, that means something. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Definitely, man. Straight up, man. 
So shoot, man, I'm uh, I'm really happy about how this turned out, and uh, I really want to get you guys' reaction to the homebrew version yeah, that I have. So you know go, what I mean? Let me go grab that. Real All right, cool, man. Uh, That's man. Sweet, man. I appreciate it, man. You know, and uh, while Proctor's out, I gotta say, man. I really appreciate you, you know, letting us do this, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, uh, like, Definitely. I know you have been uh, thinking about getting started with, you know, a podcast and everything, and, you know, whether you want to do video or just audio, I want you to know I can help you out, you know what I mean? And I'll definitely be around. Um, uh, if this was the chance for you to pitch it and let people know what it's going to be about, what would you say? Well, I mean, the thing we talked about is kind of, uh, I don't know, there's a... Uh, it's Mark Marin does a podcast. It's a, a basically a long form interview podcast, and he started out. He's a comedian, and he okay. started out talking to comedians yeah. and just kind of learning their story, right? How they got to where they are and every, everything they went through, and uh, and he's branched out from there. He had yeah. Obama. He he does it in his garage at his house. Oh wow! He had o Obama came there yeah. and did uh, <laughs> did. I mean, he's had you know. Now it's like he has a list celebrities. You know, yeah. everybody comes through his garage. It's like right. a place to go right, right. for uh, for interviews. That's like you know, if you're promoting anything, and so yeah. I we always talk about you know, kind of talking to brewers and, yeah. and figure out their story and, and how perfect. they yeah. came to be and, and everything they went through to, to get to where they are. And, I mean, we kind of have the granddaddy of things with Sam from Dogfish Head. He's, he's kind of, you know, and so and just jumping off from there and then, see, you know, incorporating music, incorporate you know, wherever it goes from there. Yeah. But just talking to brewers and kind of hearing their story. I think, yeah, I think, I think that would be a, uh, I think that would be an inspiration to a lot of up-and-coming people who aspiring to be uh, you know on your level as well them hearing your story as well as other people's stories I, I definitely I definitely would like to tune into that right there I'm so I'm definitely in full support of that you know what I mean it's the one that was in the bottom oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah man make sure y'all uh, come up our jealous man yeah. food is amazing it really Beer is. is incredible cool vibes great music oh yeah real dope you know what I'm saying our is the place to be if you didn't know, you know what I'm saying? So we go ahead and blast the address. I got it down here. It's uh, 2667 Kirkwood Highway, okay. Newark, Delaware. It's in uh, Meadowood Shopping Center. Yes. So it, make sure it's it's Newark, not Wilmington. <laughs> yeah. you'll, you'll end up at the old Jake's Hamburgers. If you, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be there. you yeah. be down here. We're right, right past 7 on Kirkwood Highway. That's what's up, man. Come down anytime between 11 and, what, 1.30? Yep. Every day, seven days a week. Yep. Awesome, yep. man. You know, toast. So yeah, this is this the homebrew. Is brew? your homebrew here. Yes, sir. How do you like the cloudiness of it? I like it. Doesn't it remind you of Mango Kango a little bit? Oh a yeah, little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty close in color. That was right, another IPA. I like the aroma. Oh, the yeah. aromas are yeah, it smells nice. A little bit sweet. Bro, let's see. It's good. Yeah. Like that. What what nice. hops did you use in this? This one is all melon or German all melon and amarillo. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 it's got it's a fruity, like, uh, no cascade, just the yeah, German all right. yeah, and nice. Amarillo. It's nice, nice man. yeah, it, it definitely on, has a nice awesome. aroma. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it smells great, it tastes great, yeah, too. It's yeah, it's nice. I mean, and even, Appreciate that. I even feel like it's like right before the tea flavor starts to dry it out a little bit, yeah, you get yeah. almost like a citrus orange kind yeah. of flavor for yeah, a second. Yeah, a little fruity, yeah. yeah, and yeah, it does get dry, right? Like, it dries it out like quite a bit, actually. Yeah. It's like the one we did, I, there's like a little bit. Yeah. But it, you can almost attribute that just to the hops, the right. brightness. Yeah. Right. But this one, it's pretty cool. This is like in the growler, it balanced out a lot more than the, than the bottles yeah. that I had. Nice. Because like the, the bottles were like powerful. Like it was, right. It was crazy. You, right. You take a sip and you like, it, it's yeah. almost like you in the desert. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. like it was still, it still just came dry out. Dry out real quick. Yeah. yeah. Right. It was still pretty good, you know what I mean? And, um, but this is, this is a lot better. Then, like, what, what well, you it sat around longer, right? Yeah, well, not all was the a same. Bit? Oh, yeah, okay. like this was like, uh, well, I bottled this the same time I did the other bottles. Okay. You know? Yeah. So, like, the, uh, um, what do you think? I just had one, because my man Andre, oh, okay. Okay. He, did, uh, he did a photo shoot for me right, with right. the bottles. And um, this was all, yeah, this was all bottled oh, okay. together. Uh, but 
I don't know. Like, does it sometimes like if you do like when when you do uh, bottle things, uh, does containing them in different size containers make difference? Make a difference in how it comes out. As far as the, the flavor profile, yeah. Um, I mean, it shouldn't really. Yeah. I mean, oh, but, the only time uh, I can see that make a difference is like maybe if if you have like seven bottles and like the first yeah. couple pick up some extra yeast or something, okay. maybe it's gonna okay. change it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Now, that usually, is, usually you can get around that. Yeah, but it won't change it that much. All right. That's awesome. Like, I'm actually happy about this, man. But yeah, I think it tastes great. I got to say, you guys. Yeah, I like it. I got to say, y'all got the champion, man. You know, would you even... Would you even think? <laughs> would you even think that this is the same beer? Like almost like. Kind yeah, of it like, certainly has different aspects to it, but it is it's similarities similar, as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we also we added honey in there. We dry hopped ours, so there's some different things right. that. Uh, and I did mine all in the boil. Right. Yeah. Like, right. and I really got to start doing uh, the uh, the uh, different layers. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, like secondary additions yeah. and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. fermentation. Yeah. And um, I think that. Uh, the day that I spent here brewing with y'all, man, right. like I, I learned a lot, you know, and I took some of that stuff and I made a home brew um, mm-hmm. after that, you know, but it was like, I made it for a party from Lane Pete. It was called Quarter Pounder. It right. kind of tasted like a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> it was real good, though, you know, it was nice. real good. It was real good. Nice. And uh, it was gone in like two hours. Yeah. It was a five gallon oh, that's batch. Good. Yeah, that's a good sign. And, uh, I had like three people come up to me and tell me to quit my job and start brewing. <laughs> right. And I was like, all right, I will. You know, right. put some money up, I got you. Right. You know? <laughs> right. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man, exactly. So uh, I ended up getting the kid. You know what I mean? Um, it came so dirty. Yeah. It was some weird shit in the bottom. Where did you get that, that from? Somebody was. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was selling it all right, yeah, right. <laughs> It looked like they might have tried to clean it, right. but they left like some of the dirt in there. Tried to, yeah. you know, they yeah, left yeah. some nastiness in there with right. the sanitizer. So it was like some something growing inside right. there. I did a, like a I did a vlog about it. I put it on YouTube and everything. But um, <laughs> it it uh it's it's a it's a new step. Right. It's a new yeah. step in the home room. Sure. Yeah. And like I'm really excited because we're going to be able to do a big. Well, not really big, but we're going to be able to do more stuff right. now that we have the keg and the, the yeah, whole sure. Just, yeah, it simplifies the process options. for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. More, yeah. more, yeah. more yeah. experimentation and stuff. Right, and less turn, less time for turnaround. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah, sure. Where, well, so. that's what I mean. I most of the time back there when I'm working, I'm yeah. I'm constantly like checking myself, like, all right, yeah. is there an easier way to do this? Is there a faster way to do this? Is there a better way to do this? Right. You know, and sometimes I come across a way. Yeah. Where somebody walks up, hey, why don't you do it like this? I'm like. I never thought of that before. Yeah, thanks. Like, I yeah. shaved 20 minutes off my day. <laughs> this is my cousin Michelle, y'all. <laughs> thanks for coming through, cuz. I appreciate you. <laughs> oh, you want this one or you want the one that, that, that we made here? It's beer. It tastes like a horse pill in this one. Yeah, yeah, it's got uh, a lot of citrus. All I heard, let her know. You want to try the, uh, the green tea? Huh? She'll give you one. Yeah, so I know you want to try the green too. Um, so now we got to get back to uh, 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 <laughs> tribe called Quest and right. and, uh, oh, and uh, yeah, yeah, De La Soul. Right. So if you could pick one song on either album, either album, because you haven't heard it, right, Gus? No. So if you could pick one song on either album, which one would you say is? Just one that you would, that it would be like a go-to song. You on the new I mean? albums? Yeah. Oh, man. I'm not that familiar well, with the new album. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any of uh, No, to name well, one. My, the that's, worst part for me wild. is as I get older and uh, and listen to music online, I don't know the names of anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we I don't all know. Are, There's a, uh, I, I, I say, the the day album I probably listen to more. Yeah. I love, there's a lot of special get like uh, David Byrne is on there. Oh wow! Uh, who, there's a I, I can't think of it. The, there's like a female vocalist on one of the tracks on the day album. Um, uh, was that Hayes? Was it Hayes? No, I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of who it is. Yeah. Cheap, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have the digital devices, right. man. They help. We have these computers in our pockets. We can figure it all out. <laughs> but that's that's a good. Uh, a good song, but I don't know names anymore, you know. Okay. Uh, but there's, I, I mean, I, I think like uh, 
Well, who else? Pete Rock is on the the new yes. De La album, yeah. I think too. Yeah, they, they have yeah. great guests yeah. on the on the new album. Right. And uh, but I, I do I love the the Tribe album too. But yeah, uh, yeah I, I'm trying. I don't know the name of the track, but what, are you looking for? what is it? What are you looking for? The De La Soul. It's, the one uh, with the uh, it's, female. It's, yeah. Uh, Estelle, memory of. Nah. No. Uh, wait. Memory of, of us. Yeah. I forgot that, that, about the one with Snoop. That was the only one. That yeah, was one good. Snoop, yeah. That was the only one. Or there's uh, Jill Scott Genesis. No, not Jill oh, Scott. Jill Scott. Yeah. Scott. Yeah, that might be up. memory. Yeah. I'd have to actually hear the song to uh, recognize it, but well, I, unfortunately, I'll tell you, <laughs> we can do that too. I'll tell you, <laughs> if I had to pick, I'm going to say the whole album, both. <laughs> That's the, yeah, I I'm blue it. I should have done that. Right? <laughs> both. They're both too great both. for me to choose one. Exactly. Like, you guys made a masterpiece. Right. It's like trying to decipher uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Right. Was that his name? Right. That was his name. Right. And, like, I really Your favorite appreciate painting at the Michelangelo, uh, the best part of the Sistine Chapel, right? Exactly. You love it you all. Know, you like the one little baby with the wings, or you like the guy with his finger? Out? It's like right. it's all great. You know? Well, it, it's like trying to choose which one of these is better. I mean, like. <laughs> Very true. This one's, it's, it's nice, it's cloudy, uh, yeah. it's got a nice dryness to it. Where? And then, Don't uh, you know, although it's a little sweet too. I mean, but this one's got yeah. a little bit more of a, a multi, you know, kind of a backbone to it, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. The, the honey, I think, uh, cuts the dryness a little bit. Yeah, yeah they, it's a little really bit more of a kind of like, a, versus, like an example of uh, with, without the dry hops and honey, and with the dry hops and honey, right. and see the and kind put, of difference that show a, up. I put a pound and a half of honey in this. One. What is it? I put a pound and a half of honey in this one. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. But it was all during. the Oh, boil. during the boil, right? Yeah. But yeah, you that's know? yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so that's like even during. Like, that'll during, eat all that honey up right away. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's like yeah. That'll that'll just give straight sugars basically a little bit of honey flavor. But then doing a late addition like a few days into fermentation with the honey. Yeah. Is you get a little bit more sweetness and honey flavor out of it in the end. See, we're learning it here. Still kind of boost the alcohol level. Yeah. We're learning here, and I really wish I was able to do the measurements. Because I really want to know right, right. how how much it is in here, you know. Yeah. But like, who knows? Who knows? Can, you, can you tell by taste yet? Can tell the alcohol. I haven't gotten to that point yet. Sometimes though, people are pretty good. Some brewers are real good at hiding a high alcohol level. Yeah. I've been telling oh, people it's like nine point eight. Yeah. I was telling people it was like nine point eight. This one, this, this made me feel like. I was buzzing, like, <laughs> like faster than within a few sips. Like, yeah. It could have been my mind, though. You know it could have been, man. You know, placebo effect. You yeah, know what I'm right, saying? Right. I, but I, uh, we, so we did, a, we did a podcast on this one. And like he said during the podcast, it made him feel like he was smoking a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 So I, on the podcast, we called it marijuana, but it was right. M-A-R-R-A. That was this beer? Marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so. <laughs> yeah it, gives you, it gives you almost a... Cotton is that, yeah, yeah, from that, that tea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And that's a beautiful thing, man. So I like when we can cross... Uh, right. You know, cross streams like that. Right. It's it real cool. You know? Yeah, I mean, the Ghostbusters never tried to cross the streams, but then when they, when they finally did, oh man, it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it crazy how, because you just said that, and it just made me think of them blasting their guns. Yeah. And like, then they would swirl a little bit in yep. the movie. Yeah. I was like, it kind of looked like a peeing contest. <laughs> like, is it just me or like, it looked like a, looked like a, 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 a pastel peeing contest. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the 80s Ghostbusters. Yep. We love y'all, man. Ernie Hudson is the man. You gotta love Bill Frickin' Murray. You know? Word. But uh, yeah, man, I really gotta say, man, you guys do so good at uh, making beer and everything that you do. You connect to the people, you know, you connect to the community, and um, everybody really appreciates that you guys are here. You know? You give artists a chance to come up on stage and do their thing, you know what I mean, of all genres, and um, it's really a lovely place, and I just want to say thanks, man, you know what I mean, yeah. from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Know, you. I appreciate you guys. That's why I want to help y'all as much as I can <laughs> with everything you do, you know, and uh, I guess with that, do you guys want to, you know, say anything else to the people, just give them, give them some parting words? No, I mean, uh, well, well, we appreciate the kind words for sure, that's what yes, we're sir. trying to do, you know, we have... Uh, I mean, our GM Pete is uh, big in the music scene, has been 
forever yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and has incorporated that in here and, and again tying in the music and the beer that's what we've tried to do you know I, I feel like uh, you know we, we do a good job of there's no other place in this area that uh, celebrates local music and, the, right. and that scene uh, kind of like we try to do very true and uh and yeah, we enjoy doing it. We have fun yeah. doing it. You know, well, and we've been doing it a long time, and we're still having fun doing it. So. Right. Dope. Well, and, and I mean, speaking of uh, tying in the music and the beer, we even there's a Sin City band has been playing at our place ever almost oh, since yeah. we opened. You know, every Monday, and uh, we have a stout on tap most of the time. Sin City Stout, named after those guys. Sure. You yeah. know, it's their stout. We did a special version for their anniversary of them playing with us here. Yep. You know. But uh, and, and then I mean I just want to add crowd, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, pack, yeah. every Monday night. They, every Monday, they pack a place every Monday night. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. See the regulars pulling up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Sin City. Uh, Sin City. Yes. Yeah. 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 Is it four guys or not? Yeah, it, it ranges. I mean, it's Scott like you know, three, three, three to six guys. Think, but yeah, yeah, they have. Yeah, but they've been they've been going strong since the seventies. They've been. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. About as long as Pietro has been. Right. But, you know, and I just wanted to add, like, I mean, you know, thanks for, you know, thanking us and being appreciative of it because, I mean, that getting real appreciation for it is, you know, it, it makes the headaches worth it, you know, when you when you screw up and you, you spill stuff or you burn yourself or, you know, something goes wrong. It just, you know, when you sit down and, and you see other people enjoying something that you ultimately had a lot of fun, you know, making. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah. rewarding. So thank you. <laughs> right. Thanks for coming out here with this great idea too. Yeah, I mean, yeah this was a fun. It's been a fun, a fun little to, journey here. Make it work. And I got more. And I have more. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm going to make one. The one idea that I have, I'm gonna make it at home first. Mm-hmm. See how it comes out with the way that I want to do it. And then uh, I'm gonna bring it to you. But I, already, I think I already told you all about it. Yeah, throat punch. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. You did say something yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna do it. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to bring it to you and see how it comes out. Because right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's going to be, you know. <laughs> but I'm going to do my best. Right, yeah. I'm going to yeah. do well, my we'll best. We'll see, right? That's the fun part about doing uh, yeah. home growing yeah. and everything. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, once again, man, it's your boy Rob Dorsey with the Beats and Brews podcast. Brian Proctor here. Nerd up, J.O. Hold up. Let me give you the mic. Nerd up, J.O. <laughs> Steve. It's Steve. And Steve. And we're here. <laughs> Oh yeah, one more cheers. And we here. Cheers. Cheers. Saluting the green tea beer. Yep. Appreciate y'all, man. And uh peace out. And nerd up.